Another Mondays with May from Arts for All. My name is May Lisa, and I am a teaching artist with Arts for All. If you've had me in your classroom or if you've been watching, you might recognize me as Miss May. Hello. For those of you that don't know Arts for All, Arts for All offers accessible artistic opportunities to children in the New York City area. And we are always incorporating our five core values, working to build self-confidence, self-expression, teamwork, resilience, and creativity in children. Now, while our focus remains in New York City through all of our new virtual learning opportunities, we are so excited to be able to reach children anywhere to view our free learning content. And of course, join us here on Mondays with May right here with me. I'm coming to you from my apartment in Brooklyn, New York. I wonder where you might be watching from. If you're watching live or if you're watching on the replay, make sure you tell us in the comments where you're watching from. All right, we're going to start the program by moving our bodies. We're going to do a warm up. You can follow me as best you can, but if you need to change anything to make it feel safer, on your body or in your space, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna start by standing up and I'm going to pretend I am a tree and I'm gonna let my branches grow, grow, grow. I'm gonna reach my branches out, out, out. And then I'm going to pretend a big gust of wind comes and I'm gonna let my leaves fall let your leaves fall and then again i'm gonna grow 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 like a tree i'm gonna stretch my branches like a tree stretch reach those branches and then i'm going to let a big gust of wind come and shake the leaves off the tree one last time grow 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 like a tree stretch reach those branches a nice big stretch and then shake those leaves let them fall 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 very nice that felt really good all right next we're gonna reach over to one side reach and stretch and say ooh ooh reach and stretch to the other side say ah ah I'm going to open my hands and my mouth really wide. I'm going to say, wow, 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 wow. And then I'm going to do and say twist the other way. Twist. Let's do all that again. Ooh, ooh. Ah. Ah. 
wow, 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 wow. And twist. And twist. Good. Now we're going to isolate our head. I'm going to look up to the ceiling. Look down to my toes. Look up to the ceiling. Look down to my toes. Ceiling, toes, ceiling, toes, ceiling, toes, ceiling, toes, ceiling, toes, ceiling, toes. I'm nodding my head. I'm saying yes. Yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now I'm looking over one shoulder, over the other shoulder, over one shoulder, over the other shoulder. I'm looking shoulder to shoulder, shoulder to shoulder. Look, shoulder, 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 shoulder. Shake your head. Say no. No way. No means no. Uh-uh. No way. No means no. And now we're going to move our shoulders. Move your shoulders like the bicycle. And the other way. Uh, shrug your shoulders up. Say, no, I don't know. And drop them. Lift them up. I don't know. And drop them. Lift them up again. Say, no, I don't know. And drop them. Give a shrug, 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 and give your shoulders a shake, 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 shimmy, 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 and shake those shoulders. And now we're going to move our hips. We're going to do hip bumps. I'm going to do eight hip bumps one way, eight the other way. Then I'm going to do four and four, then two and two. Then I'm going to go back and forth. You can count with me. Here we go. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, 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 one. All right, now I'm gonna shake out my entire body. I'm gonna count down from ten to zero. I'm going to shake, 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 shake. And on zero, I'm going to have a seat. And we're going to get ready for a special surprise. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. I feel nice and warmed up. My body's warmed up. That helps my brain feel warmed up. And now it's time for a special guest. We have a special guest today. All right, everybody, put your hands together for our very, very special guest. Welcome to the broadcast. It is Brandon of the Ojibwe people joining us. Hello. Hello there. Hello. Nice to see you all. I'm going to introduce myself in my language, the Ojibwe language, and then I'll, I'll translate. So, Bojo, Ninde Makanaduk, Miigwechki Bajayak, Gijenabe, Nindago, Tik Mikshing, Indonji, O Mashko, Sinto Dem. Uh, king. So what I just said was bonjour, our way of saying uh, greetings. Hello, everyone. And I greeted you all as my relatives. And of course, I said thanking you all for being here. And I introduced myself in my spirit name. So people call me Brandon, but I also have a spirit name that's tied to my spirit and my culture. And it's Gijenabe. It could be translated to as the kind man. And uh, yeah, I'm from uh, this beautiful place here, uh, Tikamekshing, and uh, I'll talk more about that in a bit. And my clan family is the elk, and I'm from, I also said uh, I'm, I'm bound to this land here as well. So that's my uh, traditional greeting uh, from the Ojibwe Nation, and I'm very, very happy to be here today. So thank you. I'm so happy that you could join us. So for some people, 
aren't familiar, where is the Ojibwe Nation? Do we know where that is? Okay, so the Ojibwe Nation, um, we actually call ourselves the Anishinaabe. And the Anishinaabe is like, um, there, there's subcategories, I guess, of different nations that fall under the Anishinaabe. And I'm Ojibwe, then there's other ones who are Potawatomi and Odawa, these other different nations. And the Anishinaabe, or Anishinaabek, that's how we say plural, we had a K sound at the end. We live all around the Great Lakes. So Lake Ontario, Lake, Con uh, Lake Huron, Lake Superior. Our people are all the way around those be the beautiful lakes here that, uh, that are in the U.S. side and the, uh, the imaginary lines and then the uh, Canada side. We call them imaginary because uh, before our people would just cross over freely and it would be uh, no problem. So that's where our people are from. Awesome. Um, I wonder if I said, I asked where the nation is, but is the nation more of a group of people or a physical place? Uh, when you say Ojibwe Nation, uh, you're thinking of uh, geographically, it's stretching all the way across um, these beautiful lands, all the way across the lakes. And I, of course, our people, we actually stretch all the way across to the prairies in Canada, like out towards Saskatchewan. So we have a very, very big uh, group of people. And we're uh, just kind of scattered all, out, all throughout uh, Canada and the United States. Great. Yeah, well, so. thank you for sharing <laughs> where you are. Um, we are celebrating Indigenous Peoples Month and fall today, and now I'm going to share a land acknowledgement for where I am at, and I am borrowing this land acknowledgement from another organization in New York called the New Victory Theater. We wish to respect and honor the histories of the Indigenous First Nations people who once inhabited and protected the land on which we stand. So I'm in New York, so where Arts for All stands. Prior to colonization by Europeans, the five boroughs that make up the city of New York were inhabited by the Lenape, Merrick, Canarsie, Rockaway, and Matinoc nations. It's important to acknowledge the peoples of these nations, their cultures, their communities, their elders, both past and present, as well as future generations. The land on which we stand was once part of the land protected by the Lenape peoples and was founded upon exclusions and erasures of many indigenous peoples. The intention of this land acknowledgement is to demonstrate our fervent commitment to educating ourselves and sharing information with our audiences about the enduring consequences of settler colonism. So I'm going to leave that there. And we are, I'm really happy to acknowledge that the Indigenous people aren't part of history. They are part of history, but they aren't only in history. That Indigenous nations are alive and all part of our present and our future. So Brandon, I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. Um, if you would like to share more with us about your culture, and we are also celebrating the season of fall today. So if you want to share some thoughts on that as well. Okay, great. So I have the floor? You have the floor. All right. So, <laughs> this is exciting. I get to share whatever I'd like, and that's, that's, uh, that's the best. Um, but yeah, um, I'm from this beautiful place here at Tikamek Shing. That's how I say my... Um, my community. I live on a First Nation reserve. And um, yeah, this is a, it's a small place. Uh, I would say there's about 500 people that live in this community. And everybody knows each other. And it's a very small community, but our land is actually quite extensive. And we have about 25 lakes in our backyard. Um, so <clears throat> anytime I want to go reconnect with the land, I can. I have that, um, um, just that, I don't know, it, it just, it, it feels good to have that uh, be passed down to you from your ancestors. Uh, and it's, the land is something that we have to take care of. And so more specifically, if you have no idea where I'm from or where you're thinking, a ticket making, what is that? Well, 
I mentioned the Great Lakes. So the Ojibwe peoples are, we surround the Great Lakes. And my community is on the north shore of Lake Huron, so way up on top of north, the north shore of Lake Huron. And we're not too far from Manitoulin Island, which is another, uh, just a beautiful place. <clears throat> and the Tikamikshing, you might be wondering, well, what does that mean? What does that mean in English? You know, you, you, you said that word a couple times. And our words do break down into English and we can describe my, I can describe my Ojibwe language using English, but it sometimes it takes a, a few more words. It almost takes a story to, to take one word in my language and to translate it. It almost takes a story. So I'll tell you about Tikamikshing. First of all, the first part of the word, a Tikamik, a Tikamik. That word uh, describes a fish, a fish in the water. And it's very specifically, it's the white fish. So we say Tikamik, it's a white fish. And then Shing, what the heck is Shing? <laughs> You're like, <laughs> oh, what is that? <laughs> okay, a Tikamik Shing. So you have the white fish in your mind. And now you have to think of, you actually have to think of the fall season. And um, this is pretty cool because it'll jump right into the fall because in the fall, under a very specific moon that we call um, Wabaga Gizus, um, <clears throat> Banakwe Gizus, Banakwe Gizus, Gizus is the moon and Banakwe means um, <clears throat> the leaves have fallen from the trees. So. Uh, during that time when the leaves fall from the trees, this is actually the time when the whitefish begin to spawn. And when I say spawn, I mean that they're procreating, they're making little little babies, little minnows, baby whitefish. And what the whitefish does is uh, they're swimming around, they're swimming in the water, and they, they find the, the shores where the, the water is uh, very shallow. <clears throat> And they try to find places where it's very, uh, very muddy and there's lots of sand. So they, they really like the mud because they'll, they'll go into those areas like this. And then the whitefish, uh, the females will kind of go down and they'll, they'll kind of go on their sides and they'll, um, they'll kind of sink down into the water a little bit onto those, those nice beds of, uh, sand you know or it's it's almost like a like a bed like a, a bed for a fish you know it's comfortable comfortable for them and so what happens is the the females will let out their eggs into the sand and what's really cool and this is what sheng describes is the the, the male white fish they'll be on the surface on the top of the water so the the females are below they're near the sand they laid out the eggs and now the white fish or the uh, the male whitefish. Now he's on the top. Now the whitefish or the male, he'll uh, he'll flip onto his side like this, and then their their tails will start fluttering on top of the water like this. And under the moonlight, <clears throat> under that moonlight that I mentioned, but not quite Jesus, under that beautiful uh, autumn moon, um, you'll see glimmers of light on top of the water like that all the way going going across on the shorelines and you might look at that and go wow what's happening you know it's it's magnificent because there's glimmers of light as it's happening so sheng describes the sound that that makes going across the water that so it's a shing but it's also what you see with your eyes there's glimmers of light so shing is something you can see it's something you can hear and it's almost something you can feel because you see something almost extra extraordinary happening that it puts a feeling inside of you like wow something very special is happening and so that's what happens is the white fish the male white fish will go like that on top of the water and um what he's doing is he's uh he's he's letting down his um <clears throat> his um basically like fertilizer for the eggs and then those eggs are going to become little minnows and hatch. So it's a very, very special, uh, special time during the fall. And so Tikamikshing, we've always been known as Whitefish Lake. And we went back to our original name maybe about 15 years ago. 
we went back we uh, i guess you can say we decolonized a little bit and we went back to our original place name of a tikamikshing and you don't just call it whitefish lake anymore you actually have a story in your mind and in your heart and you could say wow tikamikshing actually describes where the whitefish spawn so that's where i'm from so anytime someone says oh you're from tikamikshing oh you must have lots of whitefish there oh yes we do and it's a delicious fish <laughs> if you've ever tried one before um there's whitefish all over the world um different types of whitefish like in alaska and um, in the uk <clears throat> and it makes a really really good fish and chips <laughs> when you when you fry, up the, <laughs> you fry them up they they taste delicious and um you know we, sometimes we do that and we call it a shore lunch you know we'll catch fish and we'll cook them right on the shoreline and uh sometimes we'll uh we'll have a stick of lard and we'll cook some potatoes too that's <laughs> it's hard when you uh, when you live like that and when you're out out on the land sometimes it's hard to take oil and all these different things with you so sometimes we use lard which is just i don't know it's like a commodity we it was something that was um introduced to us our peoples uh just in within the last couple uh, hundred years so we still use lard for a lot of the cooking and it, it adds a lot of flavor <laughs> i guess but anyway um going yeah going about that um it, right now is the fall time it's still fall and in the fall in our language we call it de guage de guage and it means lots of change is happening change um lots of change from what you can see you know um the leaves are changing colors the leaves are falling from the trees it's getting frosty out that's what we call this the season the guage <clears throat> and um i'm just in a uh, a long sleeve shirt right now but i'm actually really cold um <laughs> <laughs> and uh to be honest i feel like this should be winter right now but um i feel like winter just uh, came all um came a little soon i guess maybe um <clears throat> But winter actually, it feels like winter just hit us maybe four days ago. Uh, when I look out, look out here, underneath me right now, I'm in this beautiful lodge. This is my family lodge. We come here as a family. We light a fire. We sit around. You can't see all the chairs that are in here, but there's chairs all scattered around in a circle. And uh, we do lots of different uh, gatherings in here, ceremonies. And we uh, sometimes we just like to come here as a family and just and just enjoy life and talk about talk about whatever's going on in our lives and just enjoy but when i look outside there's a big blanket of snow over everything there yeah, is uh, oh yes there is yeah <laughs> that's why i say i feel like it feels like it's winter right now but it's not techni technically winter yet so yeah. um <clears throat> in the future you might have to bring me on uh, we'll talk about winter but um i'll just share very quickly about the um the snow because we, we call it a blanket, blanket of snow. Mm -hmm. And we say that Mother Earth is beginning right now to rest. And so, um, yeah, she it's almost like Mother Earth is taking that blanket of snow over her and she's going like this over herself with the snow and she's gonna have a rest. And winter time is a time when everything slows down and it's a time for storytelling. And so I'll, I'll get more into that, but I'll back up just a little bit into the fall because in the fall time <clears throat> there's lots going on there's always something going on in the seasons but there's lots going on and we're always preparing ourselves for the next season ahead and so i'll share one thing really amazing that we we do here in a tick mixing every fall uh, there's a well two amazing things that we do first one is we have a community uh community hunt camp and so our people have been hunting moose for thousands of years. Moose, deer, elk. Uh, I'm elk clan. That's my clan family. So um, in our teachings, I can't actually hunt an elk mm. and I can't eat. I can't eat elk either. Or at least I'm not supposed to <laughs> or I'll get the yeah, <laughs> I'm not, just not supposed to. So it's <laughs> we, we have something it's called uh, it's called sacred law. So there's so, certain things we just don't do. And that's one of them. <clears throat> and um, we also used to have woodland buffalo and we don't really have those anymore. And we have a few woodland caribou and but they're very, very uh, they're almost becoming extinct. 
And so <clears throat> there's all of these, uh, these what we call the four-legged, the four-legged animals. And that's, um, that's the time when we go hunting for them, um, especially any of those, those hoof animals. So uh, behind me right here is actually, uh, this is a moose hide, a great oh, big wow. moose hide. Yeah, so we have our hunt camp, and um, as part of the hunt camp, we take the meat, you know, off the bones and everything, and we uh, sometimes we'll bring it to butchers, or there'll be pre people in the community that know how to do the butchering, and we'll spread meat out to all the different peoples. And uh, so that's the first thing that happens, and uh, especially the elders, because, you know, they're, they're getting older, and, uh, you know, they, a lot of our elders were hunters, or their grandmothers and uh, they know how to prepare the different meats and so uh, we don't expect them to go out and uh, you know haul a half you know a quarter of a moose out on their backs and come out of the bush we don't <laughs> we don't expect grandma or grandpa to come walking out of the bush like that so <laughs> us younger people <laughs> us younger people are the ones who go out into out on the land and uh, go and harvest and um, <clears throat> anytime we take the life of an animal we offer something. We offer our tobacco. Tobacco is a sacred medicine to us. We call it esema. And it's uh, esema could translate to uh, the breath or breath of the creator. And because um, uh, we have another word, nesewin, which is just the word for breath, nesewin. So we say asema, that's tobacco. And um, so it talks about breath and you're like tobacco, breath. And you, you know, people think about tobacco as a, you know, cigarettes and all those different things, but there's mm -hmm. a duality, there's a plus to things. And then there's always, you know, uh, a negative to things as well. So of course, in society, we've taken, people have taken that and exploited it and spread it around the world and it kills people, Kill it hurts our, our body. <laughs> no, don't smoke people, <laughs> bad for your lungs, it's bad for your cardiovascular, it's bad for everything. And, uh, you know, cancer is a bad thing. But on the plus side, I think if you go back to the indigenous peoples here on Turtle Island, and when I say Turtle Island, I just mean North America, South America, the indigenous peoples of this land, we've been using tobacco for a very, very long time for a positive. And because tobacco has carries a sacred gift in being able to carry our messages, our thoughts and emotions. And so we use it to pray. So when we take the life of, let's say, a moose, um, we'll we'll go to that moose and offer our tobacco down onto the land where he was where he was killed, essentially, and we'll we'll give thanks and we'll talk to the spirit of that moose and say, "This is uh, how we're going to use you, and uh, we're so thankful because you're helping to give life and continue life for our people, and we're going to do our best to um, to use every part of you." because uh, we don't waste we don't waste the animals and actually actually as i just wipe my, my upper lip there's actually a part of the moose that we cut off um that has no use and it actually is the upper lip of the moose and so we'll take the <laughs> upper lip <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll cut it out and it's really interesting because it actually takes on the shape when you cut that part out it actually takes the shape on a the shape of a bird um there's a yeah on the moose, it's, it, it's a very, actually a sacred bird amongst our people. It looks exactly like the Thunderbird. And so I'm not gonna get too deep into that, but we'll take that, that piece of the moose and what we'll do is we'll also give thanks. We'll tie it in a little string and put it up in the tree near where that moose uh, lost his life. And again, it's to give thanks. And it's, there's always that idea of reciprocity meaning give mm -hmm. and take so we just took so we're going to give something back and our belief has always been that if we take that piece off we give it back that more moose are going to come into our lives so that's the first part there's the hunt camp and then the second part is the hide camp that's something that we do in the fall to prepare for the winter so i'm not sure how we're doing for time but i, I just want to take a couple minutes to describe the the hide camp okay so the hide camp yeah so the hide camp is after we've we've um, you know t we've harvested the moose we've spread out the, the meat out to everyone now we take the hides these beautiful hides and we begin working with them and we uh, it takes a lot of hours it takes a lot of um, manpower women power uh scraping 
Uh, all we do a whole process of scraping the hides, and there's lots of soaking, and it's it's uh, it's a lot to really, uh, um, you know, describe. But what comes Sounds out like of it at the end, it's a ton of work, and it, <laughs> the work gets shorter and shorter with the amount of people that you have. It's actually it's a people thing, and also you have to be you have to know your hides. So we work with deer and moose, and th there's different ways of working with them. But in the end. <clears throat> um the final process is smoking the hide uh depending how we're going to use it we could turn it into either raw hide which is going to be used for making drums or it's going to be used to be making leather now leather is very very important especially for our peoples especially when preparing for the winter because winter is very very cold and i'm out here and i'm still shivering in my, <laughs> my long sleeve <laughs> but what we create at the end is uh we smoke the hide to create the leather and then we're able to create this these beautiful pieces of hide that are soft mm -hmm. they're very very soft and um they're warm and they smell amazing so this is really? um yes oh they smell amazing this is a, a strip off of there was many strips off of one big deer hide and it was smoked over a fire and um and uh there's so much work like we'll 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 have like a post like this and we're always working the hide like this. We're always working it and it just makes it softer and softer and softer until you get this beautiful product here. This one here, I'm probably going to turn it into uh, maybe a, a headband or a necklace. Like on my medallion, you can see this is actually hide. Oh, this cool. is smoke moose hide. So we use it as string, all types of different things. Wow. And uh, yeah, so this is the finished product. And while you're doing the, the whole process, it's usually quite smelly in a bad way. Like there's, <laughs> decay, de there's decay of animal flesh and, you know, all those different things. And some people don't like it, but it's the best to have the children out there because they get used to it and they get used to it as they get older. And that's what I say. This is just the smell of life, people. <laughs> but, but in the end, you know, there's that, you know, when I talk about the duality of things, you know, there's like a, a minus. Well, in the end, there's this this positive and you get this yeah. beautiful hide at the end. And this also gets passed around to different people. And um, but yeah, that, that that's our uh, our fall season. We're always preparing for what's next to come. And those are two very, very important things I wanted to share with you all that our people do in the fall time. We we, we go hunting for our, our moose and our deer, and then we work with the hides and create beautiful leathers. They're gonna keep us warm in these coming months. So, A yeah, lot I, of work, but it pays off. It's, it's it pays off in the end. Together. Yes, it's all about community, yes. There was a question in the comments. Um, you mentioned the grandmas and the grandpas. How, the question is, what is the age span for this tribe? Oh, age span for this tribe. Oh, um, well, it starts all the way from the child, the children. And our word for child is abenogene, abenogene. So when we say abenogene, that's our word for child. And um, <clears throat> I'll just talk really, really quickly about that word. You know how I describe tikmekshing means the white, where the white fish spawn. Abenogene, abe means they're resting they're uh, they're static they're not moving no gene means busy everything is very very busy so it talks about the child our word for child is they're they're there they're like a baby and everyone's moving around like going you know cooking and ma making hides and all these different things to to help take care of that child so that's our word for child it's uh, it's it's pretty amazing so yeah the, we have of course, all those beautiful children, and then we have the the youth, and we have our elders, and it's a great big circle, the adults and the elders. And um, in my tribe, um, it's hard to say who the oldest person is, but <laughs> our people have always lived into our hundreds, if you can believe that. So I'll share this really quickly. My great grandfather and great grandmother uh, on my dad's side, uh lived to be 114 that was my great grandfather wow and my great great grandmother lived to be 109 now wow. that was 
when our people still lived off the land and our you know our waters weren't contaminated or anything like that at that time and so our people lived to be a very 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 old um but nowadays it's like oh we got processed food and we got cigarettes and all you know all those different things that <laughs> you know can shorten our lifespans but if you think about how our people lived before the land was pure so our people lived for into our hundreds can you believe that yeah that's amazing um thank you for sharing i have one other question okay um when you were introducing yourself you introduced your spirit name and that you're part of the elk clan and yep. my question is for people who are watching that might want to say oh i want to have a spirit name i want to have a clan name um do we just get to pick our own should should the uh, viewers pick their own spirit names and clans or <laughs> can you tell us about that oh that's a really interesting question so the spirit name and the clan family um you're not the one who's going to pick your own name, unfortunately. I wish <laughs> um, I could have picked my name as a child because <laughs> I, I don't know what my name was going to be but uh, or what my name meant as a child when I say I'm the kind man. Um, it's not until uh, many years later where I discovered my name. So um, our names are usually given to us through ceremony. Um, usually when the child, usually after the child has come into the world, and so most of the time in hospitals, um, the children, the child won't have a name if they're, um, if they're going to go that route, the traditional route of our peoples. So I have two children and um, both of them, uh, when they're in the hospital, the people, workers were running around saying, well, what's his name? What's her name? And um, we say, they don't have a name yet. It hasn't come. And so they respect that now. And they say, well, okay, well, by Canadian law, you have at least, uh, I believe it's 60 days to write a name on a birth certificate. And okay. I believe it's to accompany the indigenous peoples. And so um, the elders, we actually communicate with the ancestors and the ancestors will tell us mm. who are uh, the child, who, you know, the name of the child, and then they'll carry that name for the rest of their lives. The clan, that's something you're born into is your family. When I say clan family, so my, um, Last name is Patagoose, but we call ourselves uh, the Elk Clan family. And, you know, there's that whole journey of life. There's the spirit coming from the, the star realm into this world. We walk this life. And when we go back to the star realm, when we say where we pass on to the other side, the first ones to greet you is your clan family. So I'll share oh. that with you. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. So, really mm -hmm. cool. Okay. So I just wanted to clear that up, that we don't just get to pick pick those things like a fun game. It's like part of your community and it's an important thing. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm learning so much. We're getting comments of people saying, this is so great. We're learning so much. I know we're going over time, but it's okay. <laughs> we didn't it, it have a special <laughs> guest. So um, thank you so much, Brendan, for sharing all of that, your story and your place. Um, and about your culture. I I hope that the viewers are learning a lot. It sounds like they are as I am. Um, so we are celebrating fall today. So I'm gonna do our dance break. We gotta we're gonna dance it out for 60 seconds. Would you like to join us or would you like to join us after for our cool down? Uh, how about I join you all for the cool down? All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone watching, let's get ready to dance. Brandon, I'll see you on the cool down. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry, you're still here. Oh. <laughs> All right, for today's dance break, we are dancing to Floating Through the Breeze by Little Parade. They are a bilingual music group in Chicago. Um, this song's completely in English, but they also have music in English and Spanish. So you can check them out. Let's dance. Green leaf, green leaf. Oh, I see green leaf, green leaf. Oh, I see green leaf. Thank you. 
And then Brandon's going to share an affirmation. So I'm going to use my hands to scoop the air as I breathe in. Another breath. Last one. Now you can put your hands on your heart or give yourself a squeeze. And Brandon, you can tell us your affirmation and I'll repeat after you. Okay. It, it goes like this. You are sacred. You are and sacred. You, and you are awesome. And you are awesome. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> tell yourself that at home. You are sacred and you are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, the last thing, we're going to share some ideas of things to do later. Um some oh, one thing is to find out whose land you're on for our viewers at home. Um, we can put the link in the comments. There's also a phone number you can text that will let you know whose land you are living on. Um, I am on the Lenape people's land. Um, next thing is to make a fall craft. There's lots of fall crafts on the Arts for All Facebook and Instagram pages. Here's some examples. <laughs> you can find <laughs> over on Facebook and Instagram. So those are fun things you can do. Take a look at those. They're made by other Arts for All teaching artists. And lastly is to be thankful. This is something Brandon was sharing before we started the broadcast is to just give thanks every day. And do you want to say anything about that, Brandon? You can nod in, yeah. or you can say. <laughs> just, just very, very quickly, the most important things we can put in our body, the most cleansing thing you can put in your body is water. So be thankful for the, the beautiful gift of water that you have every day. And it should be the first thing you put in your body every day. Don't go to the coffee. Don't go to the tea, all those different things, <laughs> pop, whatever. Water, so good for you. All right. Give and I'm going water. to give thanks for right. water. <laughs> It's yes. okay. And I'm going to give thanks to you for being here today. You, Brandon, you. Oh. I'm thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate thanks it. To, yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who's watching. If you're watching live or watching on the replay, make sure you tell us in the comments where you're watching from. Give Brandon some love. And we hope to see you next time. All of the previous broadcasts are on the Facebook page. So you can tune in if you missed any. Thank you. I hope you have a great week, awesome. Brandon. And to everyone yep, who's see watching. You all again. Bye. Okay. See you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, I see green leaf, green leaf, green.